Welcome back to Little Bits of Lisp. This time we're going to look at when we'd use efflet and when we'd use labels. So efflet is um, is to functions what let was to variables, right? So let allowed us to define some variables that will be like bound for the scope of the let. This time we're going to make some functions that are bound for the scope of the efflet. So here we have two functions, rather daft ways of implementing them, um, but they work. So what we have is something that's going to calculate the square of a number, multiplying it by itself, and then cubed, multiplying it by itself three times. That's fine. And then we've the what we're going to do inside this scope of the efflet is we're going to make a list of the square of 10 and the cube of 10. So here we go. Let's do that. We get the results we expect. All is fine and dandy. Now, say we wanted to change uh, the definition of our cubed to be something that's silly but also correct, which is squared times by the value. Um, we've already got this function, so we should be able to use it. But when we hit return here, we'll see we get a, um, an error. It's saying that squared is not defined. So this is quite similar to our let, right? We can't use, um, we couldn't, in let, we couldn't use uh, variables whose bindings were defined in the same definition block, um, in the same bindings block, rather. And in this case, we our function here can't use another function that's bound in the same definitions block. So I'm just going to say a bot over here. We don't care about that. So we want something that's kind of similar to let's star. Um, and I'm going to, that's a big old caveat, ex, um, asterisk on that class comment, which I'm going to explain in a minute. So what we have instead of efflet, we can use labels. And when we hit return now, it works. So labels allows our functions to refer to other functions in the same definition block. Great, that's what we want. Um, one difference, one very, very important difference uh, from let star though, is let star was the equivalent of um, nesting the let block. So let's have a look. If we had let star a1, let's actually write this properly, a1, b is a times two, and then um, like this, this is the equivalent of this. So it's the equivalent of nested lets. Labels is different. Let's just hit return here so we've got that. Labels is different because you can have the order around the other way. It doesn't matter the order of the definitions. They can still refer to each other. And that is not true in our let star example. Let me go get that back quickly. If I change the order here, you'll see we get a... a rightly so, um, an error right away, because we can only refer to previous bindings. And so that's an important difference. Labels allows us to refer to any other function in the block, including yourself. So you can write, write recursive definitions inside labels. So once again, just like with let star and like we bumped into with when and if, why would you ever use efflet um, when you have labels available? And the reason, of course, is documentation, is for readability for others. When someone hits, when someone is skimming your code and hits labels, they need to, to, to fully understand what's going on, they need to check to make sure that one function isn't calling another one, if they want to understand the behavior. But if their eyes skim along and hit Neflet, they know that all of them are independent. Now, I would say that this is less critical than the um, using, I think you, like using when instead of if in the right places is really valuable. And the same for let's start. This one, I must admit, I'm pretty bad at remembering to use flet instead of labels, um, but it is probably still important, but I'm quite bad at it. So that's the information. That's what we got for this time. I'll see you on the next video. Ciao. Let's hit the stop button.